Hey guys, I'm back with another video as part of my Python tips and tricks series. And here I'm going to talk about something fun, a fun exercise that I went through because I was trying to find my face that you see on the screen, you know, the thumbnail as part of this humongous collage. And this collage is making up, uh, it's actually showing uh, Mr. Carl Zeiss, the founder of the company that I uh, work for. And recently it celebrated, we celebrated 175 years of uh, the foundation of uh, the company Zeiss. And one of the gifts that we received was this collage where I submitted my photo and they put all of these photos into a beautiful collage right there. In fact, I have it right here. Uh, and this is the this is the original <laughs> original image. And as you can see, when I move it closer and closer, it, it has many, many, many uh, uh, faces. And how do we find how do we find our face without wasting half an hour? That is the core essence of this tutorial. And of course, this is a fun exercise here, but think of practical applications. You have a very large image and you have a template of an object and you're trying to figure out where that object is in this extremely large image. In this case, my face is the object that I'm trying to identify as part of this large uh, collage of uh, a collection of these images. So for that, we are going to use template matching as part of OpenCV. So let me go ahead and jump in and this will be a very, uh, hopefully a very short video. So you see exactly the process I followed. And uh, first of all, let's start by looking at the images itself. I showed you this large image and the way I took that is just took the sheet of paper that I just showed you and, and actually took a picture. So this is about 5K or five and a half K by four K uh, in terms of pixels. In fact, let's go ahead and open this. So I'm gonna drag this. Uh, a better way of getting much better image is scanning it on a high resolution scanner because this itself has very nice high resolution uh, photos in there. It's just that uh, when I scanned it, I did not do a uh, proper justification in terms of getting the best quality uh, image, but that's okay. Uh, it, it should still work. So we have an image right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. I know I am somewhere around here. Um, I'm somewhere around here, please believe me. We'll find that out using the using our code. But the reason I opened this image is uh, I submitted an image that is about 700, 714 by 714 pixels. But then here in my scan, uh, the way I scanned it or the way I took an image, it ends up being each photo, each face is about, uh, let's just look at this guy. This is about 40 pixels by 40 pixels. So if you look up here, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with image J. If you look at the uh, uh, space right around this region, when I move this, you see how it says 40 by 40, 41 by 42 or something. So I know that each uh, image, little image, is about 40 by 40 pixels. Since we are doing template matching, it's very important for us to get the template image itself to be about the right size. So this is exactly why I saved my image, my large image. This is a pretty large image, right? So I saved this large image as a 40 pixels by 40 pixels. So I can slide this, pix uh, this image, my smaller image, onto this large image and find out the area where I have the least square difference between the template and my large image. That's the, that's the exercise. That's it. And it should be pretty easy thanks to OpenCV. And I'm also going to show you how you can, instead of resizing the image, just use the original image. But then each time you do a template matching, rescale it to smaller and smaller and smaller sizes, and then find out where the uh, best fit is going to be. So that's another way of dealing with uh, uh, with uh, templates that are of different size than uh, the ones the, than the objects that you see in your original large image. That's the plan, let's jump in. I'm going to share the code with you, so please don't bother writing anything down right now, just uh, have fun. Just watch the video and have fun. I, I described the process up here in case you wanna read it at your own time. Okay, so the step number one, the first way, let's go ahead and import our libraries. OpenCV is the most important one. Of course, NumPy to handle our uh, NumPy arrays. Matplotlib if you want to see it, uh, uh, plot it on the screen. Or you can use OpenCV, either way. And I'm going to load my large RGB image, which is the large Mr. Zeiss's image right there. So this one, large image, and there you go. And I'm going to convert that image into gray because our function match template is going to work with gray images. So let's go ahead and convert this into gray. And then I'm going to read my template image. This time, like I mentioned, 40 pixels by 40 pixels, the small thumbnail image. And I'm going to read that as grayscale. Let's go ahead and do that. 
and then I'm extracting the height and width. The height and width is nothing but 40 pixels by 40 pixels. And I am extracting that so I can put a red box around. Once it detects my face, it's showing me the top left corner of the box uh, containing my face. So I need to draw a box of the size of 40 pixels by 40 pixels. That's exactly why I am extracting these. Okay, so uh, the meat of this is this line, cv2.match template. This method, match template, takes in at least three arguments. The first one, your large image in grayscale, your template image in grayscale, and what algorithm would you like to use? So all it's doing is it's sliding the template image onto your large image, and at every time it's sliding it, it's giving you the parameter that we are uh, measuring right here. In this example, we are measuring the square difference. So you have a, your large image, you have the template, and what is the square difference? Of course, if it's a perfect match, the square difference is zero. There is no difference between the template and that specific box within that small image. So this is what we are aiming for. So I'm looking for the minimum value in my square difference. If you are using any other parameter, like one of these uh, cross correlation and so on, you're looking for the maximum value, not the minimum. That's the only little thing you need to uh, think of. Otherwise, let's go ahead and run this. And this gets captured as part of this parameter or this uh, variable called res. And now I can use cv2.minmax look on this res. So it's going to give me four things. One is the minimum value, which is minimum value of square difference maximum value, we don't care about maximum, in fact, I don't even need that, minimum location, meaning the location where that minimum happened and the maximum location. So let's go ahead and run that line. There you go. And now I need to draw a red box. Where do I start? On the top left corner, right? So our top left corner is this. In fact, if, I, if you look at where is my uh, minimum location, minimum location right there. So this is my minimum location, one, two, one, one, 1809. So this is my top left corner. And then now I need to define the bottom right so I can draw the rectangle. So how do we define the bottom right? Bottom right is nothing but my top left plus 40 pixels, top left plus 40 pixels in width and height. So this is this defines my box. So let's go ahead and run these lines. So that and the bottom right. All we need to do is now use our open CV to draw a rectangle off color red in this case and a pencil width of two. Hopefully it's visible in the large image. We'll find out. If not, we can change the pencil width to, uh, I don't know, five or something, which will be very thick, but let's see if this works out. And once you have it, let's go ahead and write the image to matched.jpg. So once you write it, let us open our directory. There you go, that's the matched image. And let's open that in image A because it makes it easy for us to zoom in. And let me select the zoom tool and there you go. You see the rectangle. I know it's somewhere around here, but I always forget exactly where my face is. But now you know where it is. There you go. It's not high resolution, but you, you know that that's me. So this is how easy it is for you to use template matching and then uh, identify objects of interest in an extremely large image like this. Now, what if you don't want to resize your image here? This is pretty much very simple. All I'm trying to do is take the large template image and then progressively resize it and then overlay onto my large image. That's exactly what I'm doing down here. So before moving on, let's go ahead and delete everything here. Okay, and now let's go ahead and import the same libraries. Same images, uh, sorry, same images. I'm not changing anything here yet. And I'm going to import immutals right there, why? because uh, I would like to resize my image. So this is a good way of doing that. Here I can just uh, give scaling factor and then it can, uh, it can actually uh, resize my image. Uh, you'll see that in a second. Okay, so now let's start a, uh, a, an array, an empty array called best match. And why? Because I want to capture three things in best match. Every time an image is resized, I wanna do my match template and capture minimum value, minimum location, and also the scaling factor, just so we know at what scaling uh, it actually worked out. Capture all these three into an array. So that's basically initializing that array right there. And let's run it. And I'm just uh, I'm just checking it uh, 
from 0 0.055 to 0, uh, 0 0.5 multiplication factor. 0 0.5 is basically I'm multiplying my image size of 714 by 0.5. So it goes to somewhere around 360 something, right? And uh, and 0 0.05 is basically I'm going from five and a half percent all the way to why 0 0.055. I just did quick math. 714 divided by uh, what was it? 40 pixels earlier, right? So that gave me about oh, sorry the other way around. 40 divided by 714 that gave me 0 0.056 or so. So that's why I'm starting here. If you have no idea, then go ahead and generate even more uh, uh, scaling factors. That's it. So for each of these scaling factors. I'm going to resize my template image, which is which is this image, right? Which is at 714, resize it, and use that resized image to do my template matching and extract these values. And every time I extract these, go ahead and check it. If this minimum value is less than the previous minimum value, then update the uh, update these three with the new one. If not, keep this. This is basically, I'm just doing a check saying, is this really the global minimum value? And once that's done, I'm going to print out saying that, hey, the ideal template image size is whatever that size is. Hopefully we'll see 40 by 40 pixels. And this part is the same. We are just saving the image as matched. Uh, I don't know, let's call this resized or something. Okay, let's run all of these from here and pretty soon I'm printing out the scaling factors. It starts at 0 0.055 and then it going to 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on. And there you go. And it says the ideal template image is 39 by 39 pixels. Uh, it's saying 39 by 39 because 0 0.055, when you multiply that with 714, apparently that is 39 point something. So that there you go. We know that this is correct because our guess was 40. So let's look at our new image, resized right there, and hopefully it should show the same location. There you go, right there. Now I know where it is, now that I have seen it once. There you go. Another fun exercise, watch my previous video on exactly this topic. In my, in my uh, feed, go ahead and search for template matching. I did, went through an exercise where instead of just one red box, you can actually draw multiple red boxes and set a threshold on your minimum value right there. And say, okay, uh, multiply the minimum value by 0 0.8 or 80%. Show me all the faces that match 80% with my face. That's a fun way of seeing who else looks like me at my organization. That's a fun exercise. I'll let that, uh, I'll let that, I mean, you uh, let you work on some uh, example. <laughs> that you can relate to. Okay, I think this is already a relatively long video for something that's tips and tricks. I hope you found this to be useful and fun and uh, definitely practical for real life applications. Thank you guys, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you are already not a subscriber and hit the like button if you really like this video, thanks.